So a few months back, I asked on Instagram and Facebook if anyone had any questions about watercolors that I could attempt to answer. So today's video, uh, first I am going to do some very, very basic uh, watercolor instructions, like watercolor 101. Like if you've never touched watercolor before and you want to start, this is the video. Because um, I've had a lot of people just ask me simply where to start or like do you add water to watercolors so I mean I get it if you've never used watercolors in your entire life those are good questions and after the basic uh, instructions that I'm gonna do I will answer the questions that I got and hopefully it'll help you out so yeah let's get started okay so first things first there are two different kinds of watercolor there's the kind that comes in the uh, cakes, these are dry and you have to add water to them to activate them. And you know, this is the kind you've probably used because that's the way they come, you know, like in the little Crayola kits or what you use in, in school usually. This is what I typically use because it is portable. It's easy, you know, for on the go. That's just what I stick to. Now, you can, uh, also get this kind that is in tubes. It's basically the same thing, only it's already wet. It just takes a little less effort. A lot of, you know, the more professional watercolorists use this. I do like them, but I'm used to using the cake, so that's what I stick to all the time. Second, brushes. There's definitely a difference, the different, depending on what brushes you use. If you have like a little kid kit, you're gonna get this brush that's like straw. And it's just not, get rid of it. Um, now, there are brushes that are better for acrylics and oil. They are normally stiffer or, you know, um, like, you can go like this and it bounces back real quick. These are better for acrylic and oil, I would say, because acrylic and oil are um, heavy body, I guess. Watercolors, watercolor is basically the consistency of water or a little bit thicker. Acrylic and oil, you need a brush with a little more stiffness to like really push the around so what you're looking for is something that's very soft and it can hold a lot of water so yeah this is a really really nice watercolor brush I love it so much when you load it with water it just it holds the water all the way in and then the the end goes to a fine point I just dipped it in water here so you could see So not only could you make broad washes with this by just pressing hard, you can do more um, detail if you just use the very end. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I definitely would recommend getting something more geared towards watercolors because it will make a difference. I mean, it doesn't have to be expensive. Just go to Michael's and look under the section for watercolors because you know all the all the brushes are labeled. Some of them say they're good for watercolor, acrylic, and oil. If you're gonna stick to watercolor, I would definitely go towards just getting a watercolor brush. Now paper. A lot of people will come to me and be like, how do you get the paper from not buckling? And here I see that they're using printer paper. I'm talking like Xerox machine paper. As you can see, I use, I did some watercolor on this and it's all warped. When it was wet, you could just probably push right through it, like rip right through it. It's just not, it doesn't absorb it correctly. The colors don't look right on it. So I think, once again, I don't think you have to get the most expensive paper especially to practice, but I would not recommend even practicing on printer paper. What I would recommend, as I've recommended a million times, 
for practice and just starting out, get a Canson mixed media sketchbook or a Canson watercolor sketchbook. The mixed media sketchbooks in America are very affordable. Just get a coupon from a Michael's coupon for 40% off and get one of these. And so you will be able to practice freely and not feel bad about using this super expensive paper. Now, when you really have gotten through that stage <laughs> and you want to practice on something better, you still don't have to get the most expensive paper, but this is an affordable watercolor paper, Strathmore. Once again, get a coupon and use it and get it for a decent price at Michael's. This one in particular comes in a block. It's stuck down on every side. I don't know the correct terminology for that, but um, it's like the top of a tablet how you tear it off, only it's on all sides. So whenever you're done with this, you have to get like a, a razor blade and kind of separate it. The reason they do that is so it's stretched and whenever you do watercolor on it, it's not gonna warp and go all crazy like this. Of course, even then, a good watercolor paper won't do that as much, but this keeps it really nice. Now, that's not as important unless you're making a masterpiece that you're gonna sell or hang up. So you don't have to get the kind that's stuck down on all four sides. But I do, I do recommend eventually getting some watercolor paper to play with because it is very, it's very good. <laughs> like you, you'll just see what I mean once you practice with something like this for a while and then you switch to this, it'll blend easier. It just takes the water so much nicer and you, the colors will show up better. And it's, it's just definitely worth it. So start with this for the practice. Um, I am going to be putting exercises on my Patreon very soon that will help you get to know your watercolors. So while you're doing the exercises, I would recommend getting something like this. Okay, so when you are using one of these types, like the cake ones, here I'll show you another example. They usually come with some sort of surface to mix on. And I love to use that. I love it because uh, for watercolors, they don't get wasted as much because they can be reactivated. You can just can leave this on here and let it dry. And then next time you go back to, you, to painting, you'll have it right there and you can just reactivate it with the brush. Let me show you. I haven't used this for months and here we go. Just put a little water on it. Good as new. <laughs> so that's one plus about, about watercolors. So when you get the cake kind, you can just mix it right here. If you're using these or if you need more space and you, you might want to use some sort of palette. I used to use uh, styrofoam plates, but that is terrible for the environment and really wasteful and it's not necessary. So I went to the thrift store and just looked around for white plates and I ended up finding a set of four of these. They're pretty cool. They're just, they're kind of like divided and they're just uh, stone or porcelain. I don't know what it is. Regular plates. And so you can just wash these off after you're done. And I have four of them. You can also buy plastic ones in the store. Let me see if I can find one. So I couldn't find my other one that I used to use. Basically they're like a plastic palette. It, it's kind of like this and it has like little sections that you can put the different colors in and places to mix. And I don't think they're that expensive, but honestly, there's tons of plates in the thrift store that need a second life, so why not recycle? Also, when you are painting, you are gonna need some sort of paper towel or absorbent cloth, because in between colors and sometimes you get too much water, you're gonna wanna dab. So we can use paper towels or get like a tea towel or something that you don't really care about, which I've been meaning to do because I'm really trying to stop being so wasteful. I mean, you can obviously let these dry and then use them again, but I'm, I am aiming to switch over 
to washable towels. So how do you know how much water to use? That is a question that's hard for me to explain. What I recommend, honestly, is just getting some watercolor, some decent watercolor paper and just playing around. It's the only way you can really get to know it. Um, it's just like a person. The only way to get to truly get to know a person is to spend time with it and that's the same with, you know, paints or anything like that you learn, like playing piano, playing instrument. Um, when you get good at something, you're spending time with it. So don't be afraid to just play with it. Just experiment, use different amounts of water, different amounts of paint, and just see how they blend. Especially when you're practicing and just playing, there's no accidents. There's no accidents anyway, okay? Bob Ross knew what he was talking about. Only happy accidents. Okay, so let's go on to some questions. My friend Linda asked how to even begin. And that goes back to what I was just talking about. You just have to be ready with paints, paper and a brush, and just start. Don't be afraid that you're gonna screw up. Don't be afraid of what other people are gonna think. Just get the brushes out and play around. Just make some rainbows, make some color swatches, see how they blend together. Um, just get to know the paint and then Eventually you could go on to something simple like a leaf or a flower. No pressure. But Jamie yeah. and Ren basically asked the same question. How do I control the paint or how do I get it to not blob all together? Because a lot of people with watercolors, since it's watercolors, they'll just go in hard with water. And sometimes you want that. It depends what effect you're gonna get or what what effect you want to get. A lot of, if you put a lot of water down and do a swatch of color and then put another color right against it, it's gonna bleed into it. Sometimes you want that, but sometimes you don't. So if you don't want it to bleed or if you don't want it to bleed as much, then you gotta let that first layer dry first. Now you don't have to really let it dry the entire way if you just want it to be soft on the edges and not bleed as much. Let it partially dry. If you want a nice crisp line with almost no bleeding, uh, just completely let that first color dry and then you can go right up to the other color. Another thing about watercolor is, for me anyway, I need to not work with it too much. It's hard not to overwork things sometimes, but you'll get the hang of it. Um, just kind of let the paint do the work. Um, if you blend it too much, it end up might end up being muddy or hurting the paper. Um, another person asked me about properly mixing colors, and to be completely honest, I don't know. I <laughs> I've never had proper, honest to goodness, training with water watercolors. This is just what I've, you know, through experimenting and figuring out on my own. So. I would recommend just playing with it. I mean, it's the only way you're gonna get to know the paints and, you know, even come up with a style of your own. Um, I do recommend always mixing colors though. Like, you can use the colors straight out of the tube or straight off the palette, but um, there's something more authentic and is interesting about at least blending a couple colors together, even just a touch of one and the other because it's just, I don't know. It's just not from the tube. It's better. Just do it. <laughs> so that's about it for this video. I hope it was informative and inspires you to try some watercolor. Let me know if you have any other questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe as usual and have a great day. <laughs> Bye everyone.